Step into the flickering glow of a bygone era, where black and white cinematography weaves a tapestry of mystery and intrigue. As you settle into the embrace of your seat, a timeless sensation washes over you, the anticipation of a cinematic journey, a rendezvous with a classic that has stood the test of time. The year is 1958, and Touch of Evil graces the silver screen, imprinting itself upon the annals of film history. Can you recall that first encounter, when the reels spun to life and you embarked on a whirlwind ride through shadows and secrets? Perhaps it was the enigmatic opening shot that etched itself into your memory, a three-minute unbroken take that thrust you into the heart of a border town's dark underbelly. Or was it the unforgettable performances of Charlton Heston, Orson Welles, and Janet Leigh, each capturing your imagination with their intricately layered characters? As the plot unfolds, did you find yourself entangled in the web of corruption, greed, and moral ambiguity that director Orson Welles so deftly spun? And now, as we set the stage for a deeper dive, let's unveil some riveting tidbits about this cinematic gem. Imagine the intricate set designs that brought the town to life, the meticulous attention to detail that immersed you in a world of vintage cars, neon lights, and cigarette smoke. Picture the directorial choices that challenged conventions, casting shadows that spoke louder than words and pushing the boundaries of storytelling. So, dear reader, reflect on those moments that touch of evil engraved upon your cinephile heart. The scenes that made your pulse quicken, the dialogues that lingered in your mind, and the grand tapestry of emotions that painted the screen. As we journey deeper, let's unravel the hidden anecdotes and lesser-known facts that enrich the legacy of this celluloid masterpiece. The story of Touch of Evil is as much about its making as it is about its content. Behind-the-scenes tales of creativity, collaboration, and occasional chaos blend seamlessly with the final product, adding layers of intrigue to an already captivating narrative. Orson Welles' absence and studio recutting, unveiling the complex editing of Touch of Evil in the annals of cinematic history. Few stories are as enigmatic as that of Orson Welles' 1958 noir masterpiece, Touch of Evil. The narrative surrounding the film's editing has long been shrouded in controversy, with conflicting accounts muddying the waters. While Welles staunchly maintained that Universal Pictures impeded his creative control by forbidding him from overseeing the final cut, a surprising revelation from none other than Charlton Heston, one of the film's stars, paints a different picture. Heston, who played the role of Ramon Miguel Vargas, recently disclosed that it was, in fact, Welles himself who inadvertently set the wheels of recutting in motion. The filmmaker, known for his audacious vision, left the production unfinished as he departed for foreign shores to secure funding for his next cinematic venture. This unexpected absence left Universal in a quandary, struggling to piece together Wellis' vision without his guiding hand. The studio's hands were tied, lacking Wellis' personal insight. They ventured into the intricate task of editing Touch of Evil with a woeful lack of comprehension for his intended aesthetic. As the celluloid strips were meticulously rearranged, the film's intricate tapestry began to unravel, losing shades of its intended brilliance. The result was a version that fell short of Wellis' audacious design, leaving cinephiles to speculate on the untold wonders that might have graced the screen if the auteur had retained his reins. The maelstrom of conflicting narratives only deepens the mystique that clings to this cinematic gem. Wellis' absence inadvertently paved the way for the studio's intervention, leading to a version that, while remarkable in its own right, forever leaves us to ponder what cinematic marvels might have been had fate taken a different turn. Touch of elegant wardrobe, Wellis' Mexican sartorial sojourn behind every cinematic masterpiece lies a tapestry of seemingly trivial details that weave together to create an immersive experience. In the case of Touch of Evil, one such detail involves the dapper attire adorning its cast, particularly the charismatic Charlton Heston whose character exudes a distinct air of authority throughout the film. Orson Welles, renowned for his meticulous attention to detail, embarked on a journey to Mexico City to acquire the perfect wardrobe for his actors. Astonishingly, he uncovered a treasure trove of sartorial elegance through a tailor known to the upper echelons of the Mexican government. His sartorial virtuoso had clothed the nation's dignitaries, crafting ensembles that radiated sophistication and power. Heston, portraying the role of Ramon Miguel Vargas, the valiant Mexican narcotics officer, was the beneficiary of this tailored extravaganza. Clad in exquisitely tailored suits, Heston's on-screen presence was elevated to a new level of suave elegance, seamlessly aligning with his character's authoritative persona. The details, as they say, are where the devil resides, and in touch of evil, they manifest in the form of tailor-made elegance. Each stitch, each fold, was a testament to Wellis' commitment to authenticity, ensuring that not only the narrative but also the visual allure of the film remained indelible in the minds of its viewers. Orson Welles' directorial mastery shines in Touch of Evil, unveiling the collaborative magic behind the scenes in the realm of classic cinema. Orson Welles' 1958 noir masterpiece Touch of Evil stands tall as a testament to his directorial genius. Beyond its gripping plot and memorable performances, the film's production process is a fascinating tale of collaboration and determination. Welles' dedication to perfection was evident as he orchestrated an unprecedented two-week rehearsal period before the cameras rolled. 
This pre-shooting immersion allowed the cast to delve deep into their characters, giving them room to improvise and shape dialogues. Charlton Heston and Janet Leigh, stars of the film, would later reminisce that these weeks were amongst the most thrilling of their careers. The Freedom Wells granted them enriched their performances, breathing authenticity into their roles. A remarkable aspect is the shared title card of guest starring Marlene Dietrich, Zaza Gabor. Though Gabor's appearance lasted a mere 20 seconds, the presence of the legendary Dietrich was more substantial. She graced four pivotal scenes, including the riveting finale, adding a touch of glamour and mystique to the film's atmospheric intensity. Janet Lee's involvement in the project was almost derailed by financial negotiations. Her agent's initial rejection, rooted in the offered salary, seemed insurmountable. However, Orson Welles, with his visionary insight, penned a personal letter to Lee, expressing his eagerness to collaborate. In a bold move, Lee confronted her agent, prioritizing the rare opportunity to be directed by Wells over monetary gains. This steadfast decision underscored the director's magnetic pull and the film's undeniable allure. Touch of Evil not only captivates on screen but also behind the scenes. Wells' willingness to foster collaboration and his ability to draw out exceptional performances resulted in a cinematic gem that continues to intrigue and inspire. The legacy of this masterpiece echoes through the annals of film history, a testament to the power of artistic synergy and the guiding hand of a visionary director. Orson Welles' Touch of Evil, a cinematic triumph with controversial origins in 1958, Orson Welles gifted cinema enthusiasts with Touch of Evil, a film that has left an indelible mark on the world of moviemaking. Amid its gripping narrative and bold visuals lies a tale of behind-the-scenes intrigue that rivals the suspense on screen. Central to this iconic more thriller is its mesmerizing opening scene, a technical feat that showcased Wells' innovative prowess. A sweeping tracking shot lasting three and a half minutes, it was a groundbreaking achievement of its time. Notably, this shot set a new standard, but it's interesting to note that years later, the player won up the record with an eight-minute opening tracking shot. Yet, Touch of Evil remains a trailblazing masterpiece. Delving into the film's backstory reveals a clash between artistic vision and studio interference. Orson Welles clashed with Universal Pictures over the film's final cut, with disputes spanning from casting choices to narrative alterations. The studio, skeptical of the film's potential, hesitated to screen it at the Brussels World's Fair. Against all odds, the head of distribution defied the studio's reservations and submitted it for consideration without their knowledge. The result, Wells' creation triumphed, winning the top prize at the fair. The head of distribution, however, paid a heavy price for his conviction, losing his job. Remarkably, Wells' personal experiences cast intriguing shadows on the film. The drug-related scenes in Touch of Evil found inspiration in his own encounters. The Grandy Kid's marijuana use echoed his disregard for the drug's legality, while the portrayal of violent heroin use symbolized his belief that anything stronger was tantamount to suicide. This intimate connection between Wells' life and the film's narrative lends a provocative layer to its themes. Intrigue, innovation, and audacity define Touch of Evil, a film that resonates far beyond its release. Wells' battles and victories, both on and off-screen, have cemented its place in cinema history, reminding us that the art of storytelling often mirrors the struggles of its creators. Orson Welles' vision triumphs, the journey of Touch of Evil to its director's cut in 1958. Orson Welles unveiled Touch of Evil, a cinematic masterpiece that left an indelible mark on Hollywood history. Welles' innovative approach and creative decisions shaped the film's legacy, culminating in a director's cut that echoed his original vision. A pivotal aspect of Touch of Evil lay in its groundbreaking use of the Eclair Came Flex, a new handheld camera. This marked the first instance in Hollywood's storied annals where such a device was harnessed to capture dynamic and immersive shots. Wells Keen Eye capitalized on this innovation, notably showcased in the film's mesmerizing opening tracking shot. By placing the credits at the outset, superimposed over the film's riveting commencement, Wells defied convention to keep viewers engaged from the very first frame. Yet, as time unfurled, a disheartening alteration was thrust upon Wells' opus. Theatrically released in 1958, Touch of Evil presented its credits before the story's inception, diverging from Wells' creative preference. However, fate and perseverance would ultimately favor Wells' artistic aspirations. Two decades later, in 1998, a transformative director's cut emerged. With credits shifted to the conclusion, the film embraced Wells' original intention, honoring his desire for an unobtrusive opening sequence. This triumph was not solely the product of happenstance, it was rooted in a remarkable discovery. When news of unauthorized re-editing reached Wells' ears, he took pen to paper. Crafting a memo brimming with impassioned specificity, he meticulously outlined how his creation should be unveiled to the world. This document, once thought lost, proved to be nestled within the possession of the film's star, Charlton Heston. From this treasure trove of insights, the 1998 re-release emerged, a phoenix rising from the ashes of creative misalignment. Touch of Evil is more than celluloid and reels, it's a testament to a visionary's ardor. Well, steadfast dedication, coupled with the synergy of innovation and timing, birthed a film that transcended its era. From the Eclair Came Flex dynamic embrace to the strategic repositioning of credits, Wells imprint endures, a beacon for filmmakers navigating the nuanced tapestry of artistic intent.
In the tapestry of Hollywood's history, Touch of Evil remains a compelling chapter, illustrating the power of resilience and artistic integrity. Orson Welles' ambition, etched in every frame, continues to inspire generations, underscoring the adage that true visionaries pave their paths against all odds. As we bid adieu, the timeless allure of Touch of Evil lingers in the air, a cinematic masterpiece woven with shadows, intrigue, and a captivating dance between light and dark. Like an enigmatic puzzle, the film invites us to unravel its secrets and revelations, much like the labyrinthine streets of its border town setting. As the credits roll, one can't help but be drawn into a reverie, pondering the tangled threads of morality, corruption, and human frailty that this masterpiece gently tugs at. Every frame of this cinematic gem is a brushstroke in a vivid canvas of emotions, prompting us to not only witness the story but also to confront the shadows within ourselves. It's a reminder that beneath the polished facades we often project lies a realm of complexities waiting to be acknowledged. How does Touch of Evil resonate with you? Is it the haunting score that still echoes in your mind or the unforgettable performances that have etched themselves into your heart? Perhaps it's the way the film beckons you to explore the thin line between good and evil, urging you to introspect your own choices in the tapestry of life. So, take a moment, let the film's essence envelop you, and allow it to evoke the recollections that have been etched by this cinematic treasure. Your reflections, dear reader, are a part of the legacy that Touch of Evil continues to weave, reaching across generations and traversing the currents of time. Share your thoughts, your favorite scenes, and the emotions that stir within you when recalling this film. Let your voice blend with the multitude of stories inspired by this celluloid gem as we celebrate its impact on our lives. Thank you for taking this introspective journey with us and for sharing your sentiments about Touch of Evil. Your time and thoughts are invaluable as they breathe life into the stories that move us. Until we meet again to explore the tapestry of creativity, keep the spirit of cinema alive in your hearts.